Hi, I'm Steve Blue in Berlin, VP Engineering and one of the founders of Silk Arts. I'm uh, here today to show you a demonstration of Silk Plus Plus. Uh, what we've built here is a program which shows how we use uh, Silk Plus Plus running on a multi-core machine. By the way, that noise in the background is, uh, is our uh, eight-core system uh, running. We've got uh, eight cores and a very loud fan, so I'll try to uh, speak up here and make sure you can hear me. What we've written here is a implementation of the quicksort algorithm. Quicksort is a standard algorithm for sorting, um, uh, well, sorting anything. In this case, we've got 100 million, an array of 100 million uh, integers that we're sorting, and we're going to uh, test that running on both single core and on uh, multiple cores. So first let's start up uh, the single core version. And it takes a little while. It takes, uh, in this case, to sort 100 million elements. Uh, it takes between 20, about 25 seconds. Uh, it's the sort of thing that if you're trying to do interactively, you maybe uh, talk to a friend, make a phone call, get a cup of coffee, mark time, try to entertain your audience. Um, Eventually it uh, finishes, there we go, good, uh, 28 seconds. Um, unfortunately, when you move, move uh, this algorithm to a multi-core machine, uh, it still takes 28 seconds because this is a, a serial algorithm that runs on one core on the machine. doesn't matter if you have two, 12, 200 cores. Written this way, it takes uh, the same amount of time. So what we've done is built a parallel version of this algorithm using uh, Silk++. Plus Plus. And what I'm going to show you here, first, uh, let's run that on three cores on the machine. I'll start a parallel sort. And you see that it runs uh, much more quickly. In fact, I'm going to pause that for just a moment. And you can see that we've color-coded the uh, lower region here to show which region of the array is being sorted by which core. In this case, we have three cores, indicated by red, blue, and green. Uh, let me resume that. And because the way our algorithm works, you can see that once one core finishes sorting a region, it goes off and finds some more work to do. So we're not actually specifying which core sorts which region. That's all handled dynamically by our uh, scheduler. So let's go ahead and finish that up. And at the very end, they're all going scrambling for a little bit extra work until it, it uh, finishes. And on three cores, it took uh, about 10 seconds. Now let's push that up um, and use multiple cores. In fact, we can even oversubscribe and claim to use 16 of what we call workers, which will schedule two threads onto each uh, of the eight cores in the system. And we'll run that, uh, race that against the, the serial version. So we'll start them both up. And you can see the serial version is still running along, takes uh, about as long as it did before, but uh, we finished uh, the parallel version in just about four seconds. What uh, we like about the way the Silk Plus Plus uh, implements parallelism is that it scales very nicely. If you're on one core, you get very little, if any, overhead. But if you have multiple cores, the more cores you have, the, uh, the faster it runs. There we go, it finished up. And we got about seven times uh, speed up, um, which is pretty good on an eight-core machine. Uh, so, scalable performance, that's the one of the key things that we think uh, people want Silk++ Plus Plus for. Let me, take, let me show you the, uh, the code because we're actually uh, pretty proud of how simple it was to, uh, to implement this, uh, this demonstration. I'll start up Visual Studio. Here we have Visual Studio 2005. And bring up uh, a copy of uh, the algorithm that we were running. This is a slightly simplified version of the program without all the user interface code, so you can see just the part that we have to parallelize. The rest of the code is there to manage the, uh, the user interface and the screen and the progress bars and all the pretty colors. But the basic code is very, very simple. In fact, it, uh, the quicksort uh, fits on one page. This is a, a standard algorithm, uh, and the way the algorithm works is uh, we basically say if you have anything left in the region you're sorting, begin is not equal to end, then we partition that region into two, two sections using the partition file here. Then uh, we call quicksort for the lower half of, of that region and recursively call quicksort for the, for the upper, upper half. 
Now, in order to make this a parallel algorithm, all we had to do was add a single keyword called silk spawn. And what silk spawn does is say that that sort of the lower half proceeds, but the program continues on to the next line here, which is a sort of the upper half. Those two halves of the array can be sorted in parallel. And because this is done recursively, each of those halves gets split into half, and so on and so on, until we get down to sorting, a, in this case, a, just a single element. Uh, at the end of the, uh, the function, uh, we, we do a sync, which says we have to wait for both halves to be finished before we return. Uh, that's actually done implicitly, but we put it in here uh, to demonstrate two of the three keywords in silk, silk spawn and silk sync. The only other keyword you need to implement parallelism with our language is silk for, and that does essentially the same thing, but automatically uh, parallelizes the body of a for loop. Now, this is about as easy as you can get. Uh, one keyword, and we've taken an algorithm and sped it up uh, to run in parallel and scale irrespective of the number of cores it's running on. One core, low overhead, many cores, scalable performance. Uh, so, great performance, really easy to use. And the third thing I want to highlight with this demo is um, uh, how reliable the code is and what, what tools and steps we take to ensure that when you convert serial code into a parallel implementation, you still get a, a reliable reliable uh, program. What we've done is actually introduced a race condition to the code. Right here, where it says middle minus one, as you see in the comments, middle minus one really should be middle. What we're doing here is taking the two halves of that array and overlapping them. So we're actually sorting the middle element into the left and into the right part of the array. Now that's a bug, but that bug usually wouldn't show up because you might have to run this millions and millions of times before you actually saw that in the field. Very difficult um, bug that, that lurks in parallel code uh, called a race condition. And the problem is that that element may be accessed in parallel by two different cores. What we've built is a tool that we call Silk Screen, which helps to screen out race conditions. And we've integrated that right into Visual Studio. Uh, the way that works, in this case, I'll go ahead and rebuild the program, and this is building it with the race condition in place. And then I can go to the tools menu uh, as soon as it finishes building and run that program under the silk screen race detector. Now, it's, in this case, uh, for the purpose of the demonstration, we're not actually sorting all 100 million elements. In fact, we can see the race by sorting a much smaller region. And that's actually a very powerful uh, concept. You don't have to run your entire test suite in order to see the race, simply have to run enough of the program to expose that a race could possibly have occurred no matter how that program got scheduled. In this case, the race detector give, gave us uh, warnings. There are potential race conditions. We can click on those and come straight to the source line. In this case, we can see that the race is on the partition and on the uh, library code implemented by the uh, standard library that does the swap of the first and last element. So that partitioning is actually racing, trying to move that middle element into both halves of, of the array. Uh, notice that we actually bring you straight to the two lines of source code that have a race, uh, making it very easy for you to find where the race is in your code. Uh, so once we found that race, uh, we can fix it by simply correcting the code, uh, changing that back to not, not having overlapping regions, we'll go ahead and rebuild the program and try running it under the race uh, detector once again. In this case, notice that the program in both cases is built without errors. There's no error according to the compiler. This is really just a runtime error. So we go ahead and run it under the race detector again, and this time it found zero race conditions. That's basically it. What we've shown you with the, this demonstration is that we get great performance using uh, Silk++ Plus Plus on a, a, a standard algorithm for doing sorting. Uh, this can apply to many different kinds of programs. Very easy to use, a few simple keywords. And finally, you can build reliable code using uh, tools that are integrated into the environment that, that you're already working in. <laughs>